Hello, there we go. We've gone live out to the UK. Thank you for all those that are coming in. I can see you streaming in. Um, I'm going to just waffle really for the first minute or so because uh, we've got just under 200 people registered for this webinar. So it's a popular one. Um, and it always takes time for Zoom to be able to allow everybody in. So those it's let in first, um, if you could just let me know that you can hear me, that would be a good start. And uh, if you could just let me know that you can see both my face and the lovely Stuart when you can, just stick it into the Q&A box if you can see us and hear us. This is where no one's brave, someone tell me. Stuart, I know you can hear me because you would have told me, but oh yes, we can. Pauline, you were fastest finger first. We should have prizes, but thank you very much. Uh, and good, Gal, loads of you have joined in, brilliant. Um, we will kick this off in about 10 to 15 seconds or so. We've still got more people streaming in. So I'll just make sure that everyone is in and doesn't miss any of it because it's going to be a fully packed hour. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, should, this does still happen, even though we're not working at home anymore, but should uh, we get cut off for any reason, we will restart the webinar. So please just hang in there. If internet fails, Stuart's definitely got dodgy internet. He's just moved into new office with new Wi-Fi. But don't worry, we will come back. So stay online. There will be a recording of this session shared with you straight afterwards. So don't worry about that. Any of the juicy nuggets that you receive, you will land in your inbox within the hour or so following the webinar. Right, let me get going. And to do that, I'm going to share my screen. Again, if ever that doesn't work, do please let me know, share screen. Can you see screen, Stuart? Yeah, good, right, two secs. I'm just gonna get all the right screens open because I didn't have them open. I did, and then I didn't. Right, now, ready to go with sharing. I'm just gonna drag that price over. Ah, right, lovely. Well, thank you very much uh, to everybody for taking the time to join us this afternoon. I am utterly delighted to see you all here. Um, I'm the CEO here at Futurely. My name's Helen. I know I've seen very familiar, familiar, familiar names in the list, so I know many of you already, but there are, as I've already said, over 200 of you on the call. So clearly this is a very, very popular topic. Um, joining me uh, is the brilliant Stuart Hurst. You can see him there and you can see him in real life. Uh, I will introduce him properly formally in a minute, but hello Stuart, thank you very, very much for joining us today. Uh -huh. To give everybody a quick heads up on what we're going to go through. You can tell by the pace at which I'm talking, it's a jam-packed session and we want to get as much covered as we possibly can in the next hour as there's so much to go through. In summation, though, I am going to be grilling Stuart as to really the challenges that they faced as a part of uh, when they were promoted, uh, prompted to make the decision to focus on specific sectors and, of course, build their advisory offering within those sectors. We will uh, uh, look at how they tackled them and any of the hurdles and challenges that they did face along the way. And then obviously the solution that they did agree upon. Uh, to bring it all to life, Stuart's actually going to focus on one of his real life customer examples. I think that really helps. Um, kind of ground it for everybody on the call and kind of really, as I said, bring it to life. So we will focus on a specific client. And then we will spend the last 10 minutes actually going through Futurely, which is the product that does underpin a lot of the offerings that Stuart makes. But we're going to use it um, very much uh, tactically as how Stuart uses it to deliver the conversations that he's trying to. So we'll take you through the various elements that he uses and he'll explain um, how he engages with the clients and how he gets their buy-in. There will be time for Q&As at the end, so please use the Q&A box that you all did to let me know that you can hear me, and we will cover those questions at the end of it, and then share any of the critical answers out uh, in follow-ups if we do need to. But before I pass the mic over to Stuart, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Futurely, um, but I promise I will keep it very, very brief. Um, so Futurely, who are we? Well, we've worked with accountants really over the past 10 years, which is why I know many of you on the call, and we've supported them with the delivery and the scaling of advisory services to their small business clients. Our very latest solution is truly cutting edge of advisory technology and integrates really importantly with the workflows of accountants, so you guys, and enables you to deliver budgets, forecasts, scenarios, reports really quickly and easily. And most importantly, for what this conversation is about today, to deliver an ROI. And that is where we're going to focus most of our efforts today when we're talking to Stuart. So enough about us. Let's hear from you, Stuart. So Stuart, over to you. Tell us a little bit more about accounts and legal. Uh, oh, where to start? Yeah, so as it says on the tin there, yeah, four offices across the UK, um, kind of 15 staff to 50 over the last three years or so. 
turnover uh, wise, yeah, like I say, it's, it's gone from like what 1.2 million to two and a half. Um, there are thereabouts. Um, yeah, client wise, owner managed businesses, you know, people that, that don't know finance in particular, well, generally, I'd say 70% of our clients don't know the difference between, you know, what net current assets means and, <laughs> and, and the world of finance is, is a bit crazy for them. Um, we like to work with businesses that want to grow and, and want to make the most of technology, really. Um, we're good with construction and digital market agencies. We work with all types of clients, but those are two niches that have kind of somehow ended up happening, I think, just because they've got different challenges to others. Um, and yeah, cash flow is something, especially, particularly even in this, I've done three of these this morning, funnily enough. Like it's cash flow is just on the tip of everyone's tongue, particularly the way the uh, recession looming, the economy and whatnot, but, but it's a really important part for a lot of people's businesses and, and just trying to get it in a, in a way that's humanised for these businesses is, is ultimately our our remit and goal. I think that kind of moves us nicely onto this actually, because although cash flow is critical and often the thing that people dream about, not dream, have nightmares about as they're going to sleep, wake up thinking about, sweating about, uh, it's really, really difficult, isn't it, to engage with clients, to discuss more than what's happening today, so to look further ahead into the future. And I guess that's one of the challenges you faced on actually how do we start to tackle that? How do we change the conversation from being, oh, I've got no cash today to right, let's really start to future plan for this and future proof the business. Yeah, absolutely. And like for even for a lot of businesses, successful ones or grown ones that do millions of pounds, there's still that temptation to is looking at the bank balance to make decisions as opposed to thinking about the you know investment opportunities, difference between a PL and the cash flow and and, and just get to grips with them. And I, I, I always find that, you know, accountants traditionally are bad at cash flow and talking around that because there's not been a great solution sometimes or it feels very laboured or you're in the world of Excel spreadsheets per client, which can be a bit cumbersome and they're out of date tomorrow. Uh, accountants prefer p and I tend to find and clients yeah. tend to prefer cash flow. So, so how we bridge that gap has just been, you know, something to think about really and future has been brilliant for that. But why did you decide to, apart from the obvious, of obviously you had these clients that were burning and in need of cash flow, why did you decide as the business strategy to change the conversation into this more advisory-based conversation? Um, just because, well, because clients need it, like because, because year-end accounts are boring and don't add any value and, and you don't stand out from the crowd ultimately. Like, what, do, no one cares and, like, everyone signs them off six, like, six months after and decisions can't be made. And it was just to help clients, really. So one is, what my dream is, you know, my, I've seen my father lose everything 25 years ago and, and how bad how bad financial advice or lack of it, any financial advice changes lives and can destroy families brutally. From a commercial aspect, from an accounting point of view, the ability for us to sell uh, and this advisory, uh, uh, you know, relative premium as well, obviously makes things easier. And, you know, I, I can genuinely say I've had clients that pay 100, £120 a month as a monthly fee originally that are now moved into several hundred pounds more or are happy to pay a couple of grand one-off fee to build something that actually means something to help them understand their business. And the other common probably misconception is, oh, if a client is struggling with cash flow, they won't pay us to do this. And I would say the exact opposite is true, that those that are struggling need need this more than any. And you'd be amazed that the, the clients that are best pays and pay it the quickest and will pay the most are often those that are... Uh, that, that are struggling because they need well, that they, support. It's, there's, a, there's a great, um, there's, there's a ruling actually in sales that follows that suit of be a painkiller, not a vitamin. And at point of painkiller, if you're trying to solve a direct pain, people will pay whatever it takes to solve it. Whereas a vitamin is a much harder sell because it's a nice to have and almost you're right. Those that got cash flow problems, don't be afraid of tackling them. But you, pro you said something there, which I think will probably put the fear into a lot of firms and I and I think the way that you approached it removes the fear from it the word sell and selling advisory because I don't think accountants and the successful accountants I've seen do this don't sell it's about completely revolutionizing the conversations that they're having so what did you do to do that yeah and I think it, yeah it's yes I think you gotta be confident enough in in the product and in your service but it's not What's beautiful with this is it's about tailoring it to that client's needs, and it might. It's with this you can you can want you can you can bang something out in thirty minutes as a one shot sends check. Like, is this okay? You know, and plugging it in and showing them their own. I think it's to, to help sell it, showing them their own data, having that basis of at least they've got something that makes sense instead of a pretty graph that doesn't mean anything to anyone. Of you, you can at least start that journey if you like. So, so the initial sell was. 
you show them their own numbers for starters, plug it in and just give it, the predictions are pretty decent um, off the bat as a, as a run rate. And generally, if we see trouble coming, future we'll see trouble coming and it, we're not far off for showing showing them that. Or indeed growth opportunities. So, so yeah, plug and play to start with, show them it. Yeah. Give, them, give them that 30 minutes is a, is a great way to start the, the sell, so to speak. And again, and just just to pause on that for a moment, Stuart, because I want I really want those on the call to have takeaways from this. So yeah. that first conversation, when do you have it? Do you loop it into a compliance meeting, a year end meeting? Are there critical times in the year you found to be more effective for delivering these sorts of conversations? Or uh, how do you know where to start with which client? Well, again, a good question. So, I mean, we have quarterly catch ups with all clients by default. So you pick it up like it, it can come from everything and anything, basically. On, the okay. conversations but i'd say um on onboarding even at the start when you first take a client like question one is what are your hopes and dreams and goals for this business and that can frame a hell of a lot on like if they yeah. want to, to the moon or or it's a lifestyle business which can affect the the approach for for one year end is a great is an easy win like if, if all else fails the year end compliance wise yeah that's a nailed on we've seen something look at the numbers yeah and use some of the tech stack, you know, there, there, are, there are pieces of software that can throw um, detailed lists out in terms of movement of client base. So, you know, um, we've used things like, well, Dex Precision, for example, yeah. in our entire client base, mm -hmm. 600 clients that will flag. These are the top 20 that have seen the most growth. These are the top 20 this month that are, that are losing cash. And, and and that's a great place to start. Um, but I would just say, in terms of speaking to clients, like don't you don't necessarily need to go with the biggest and baddest and craziest forecast. Like start with the low hanging fruit. You could, you know yeah. it, it can be a one man band consultant with three invoices a, a month if he's not getting paid, kind of thing. So so start with what's easiest and probably start with the businesses that you know and that you've got some kind of trust with already necessarily. Like if you, if you are that advisor and there's the, of course. you've known them for three years and you know what's going on in that business, then, you know, then, then why not start, start there first? And what kind of um, conversion metrics? I don't know if you even track it. Do you track? You know, we know that if we speak and I take this approach with five clients, we'll convert one of them into advisory or actually are the conversion rates so high that, it's a surprise if you don't convert one of them into. Yeah, a I'd say yeah. I mean, at least to get at least to get um, a one shot, like if you like, kind of thing for a one shot forecast. So look, price wise, they start at the, the cheapest one shot starts at three hundred pounds for a literally wow. like it's plugged in. There's the number. There's an excerpt. There's a G sheet takeaway like done. Up to I mean, again a one shot wise, depending on the complexity three four five thousand pounds on the really like beastie ones as one shot and is that that one shot you mean by a one-off one charge yeah we'll set one you up shot is, you is okay. a sophisticated model often for a bank yep. or financing where it's really detailed you've lots yep. of assumptions you're using all the prepayment tabs stock tabs mm -hmm. all that jazz all the payroll stuff which we'll come to later it's really juicy and often you know there might be six figures on the line in terms of getting finance or keeping an overdraft etc in which case that five thousand pounds is pretty normal. And truly, so if you want to take hours and days on these forecasts, you can of in course. terms of on, on the detail. So they're one shots. Other ones it bleeds into management accounts and cash flow forecasting. And again, lowest amounts hundred and fifty quid a month up to maybe for the pure cash flow bit five hundred quid a month. Say depending on whether it's a monthly kind of thing or there's one client that we see weekly on this that we plug in, and every week it's like we need we need to know the numbers every week. Cash flow is where it is. Can we pay wages? Can we pay, what can we push back, pull forward? And see so And do you, you get do you get pushback on the pricing from the clients or because of the way you've delivered it through bringing the numbers to life? They've seen the problem, they've seen the fix. It becomes a simple close, if you like, in terms of um, locking them into that monthly. Yeah, I mean, generally, yeah, it's it's um yeah, generally speaking, there's not too much in terms of the close as such. We get the other one that wants to think about it or have yeah. a play with it and so do we. Honestly, some of our accountants still think about it. And we're like, yeah, why? Yeah. Why are you thinking? Um, <laughs> and some of the harder ones are the ones, truth be told, that want to play with futurely themselves. Like, what can I have trained on it? And I want to take it. And I'm I'm more mm, I can give you some training on it, but I think you really need our support around the numbers and, and tweaking things and looking out. For well, things. So you do, because it's like you wouldn't send them off with your spreadsheet, would you? And say, there oh, you go, there's yeah. my spreadsheet, go and have a play. And it's the same. That's all that we are, is a tool to help you with delivery. It's not about 
necessarily leaving them to run yeah. their own devices because it's better with the advice the whole purpose is we generate the numbers that then enables you to spend the time delivering the yeah. advice yeah the rates you charge that i don't want to get stuck into a full pricing chat because we will run out of time very very quickly but how did how did you decide on the pricing because that's part of this first conversation it's quite a convoluted complex process to pick those numbers what did you do yeah uh well so I, I led the charge and messed with it first and played with it and we probably lost money in terms of, i owned the price i remember doing one fun okay in christ like this should have been three times the mark if i'm honest um but it, it's a start <laughs> with playing with it getting used to it start with low hanging fruit and ultimately it, it's it's a combination there's an element of time don't get me wrong i mean that's a bit dinosaur of course there's an element of time in terms of what level of, of seniority you can do this how complicated mm -hmm. is it yeah but then there's the there is the value piece of you know mm -hmm. For me, there's value and there's time pressure. So if this is for a bank and it's to raise six figures, that raises the stakes of that forecast. Like it needs more of a review. Ergo, I can ch I have to charge more because it will probably be scrutinised and there'll be more questions on it in terms of that side of things. And again, time pressure. If someone wants this in a week, that will double the fee versus if yeah, someone wants over the course of a month. So okay. So there's time. There's value and there's urgency are the three factors that... that and the final pricing numbers. question, how do you ring fence scope creep? Because I imagine that's often a challenge on these monthly fees. Yeah, again, on the it's not as bad an issue. On the monthly fee, we, we do realise that it's, it's going to be... We, we tend to charge a one-off even if it's going to build into the... It's a monthly okay. fee, a one-off of 500, right? Month is 200, say. So we try and bake in some, but we know... Again, we'll do it. We, we fix that into a number of sessions. So depending on the value, it'll be a one shot session or three sessions over the course of a week, two weeks to build the first forecast, if you like. And then anything beyond that, that's where it, it then bleeds into, well, it's rolling into the monthly one. We'll catch up next month and we'll, we'll update it. But what's beautiful with it, as we'll show later, is there's an element of you can give the client stuff to do because the G, the G sheets linked to Futurely is so amazing. Because ninety percent of people know how to use a spreadsheet or fill in two lines, so you can go, you fill that bit in, and when it's ready, you send it to us, and we'll do the import. And okay, that just that that is, this is what's so different to any other cash flow app I've used before is that you can really get the clients to do sixty percent of the heavy lifting without you know without not not without knowing because you're not tricking them, but you're making it no, yeah, understandable yeah, yeah. for them. While they're doing a chunk of that lifting, we well, are so. taking our assumptions, which get you to the starting point. You get their variance assumptions in there. You then use your expertise to combine the two together, and then start to translate and advise on the output of all of that. Yeah. Those figures com yeah. combined. Um, okay, good, Laura. I'm, I'm conscious of time, so I want to slide you in now to actually talk about. Um, the client base in particular, because I think one of the things that you've done very well, which has helped you, yes, you've tightened up pricing and yes, you've tightened up that we need to do this as a whole practice and go and deliver advisory, but you also became very sector focused, didn't you? Yeah, so I mean, again, we've, we've, we've used features across a ton of sectors in terms of um, where it works, but we find it, it is great when you've got a sector specialism, you can start that just naturally that comparison of data and what terms are and what margins are like in certain industries, what time to pay is compared to other people and construction and, and digital marketing. So they've got a few little quirks and it's nice to go, well, best practice in this one that's working well was this. So um, it also means we've got a squad of people that are used to like things like CIS, which is a bit more unusual and a lot of accounts yeah. don't like it. Factoring those kind of things in um, through the, the chain really just make it a little bit and when you were making that decision though on all because you've got London I know you've got a sort of a weighing towards those sectors but did those sectors appeal because you knew that one that there's the cash flip on but two that they their appetite to um to take advice would be high did you think about the growth and actually the new customer acquisition piece that could be wrapped around becoming this but you know what different factors yeah, did you consider um, when choosing it uh, to be honest, those two are so different as well. So they're, they're like chalk and cheese. So we, we felt the construction industry was so underserved. Okay. You know, a lot of the construction industry don't get tech or don't use it particularly well. It is quite um, an area that can be radically changed with technology. But a lot of, the, you know, a lot of people in construction don't fear the numbers, but I don't fear with them at all. And 
and they're the ones we felt they were the ones that needed most time to pay and the, and the various taxes. So but did you have to go through quite a big tech stack setup then? So did a lot of them have Zero or QuickBooks or Sage beforehand, or did you have to go through the process of getting all that? Yeah, there was an element. Yeah, I would say half of them. Half of them these days are on a cloud platform, but okay. half of them, half of, is they need they needed they needed more work on the cloud platform to get. I can into imagine. That <laughs> but once that when you do get them in it and you get a taste for it, you know they they're more open at that point to trying new things and trying extra bits of technology and and ultimately if i go to a client and go it looks like in the next 90 days like you're going to hit your overdraft like we need to have a chat then it, it's rare a business owner's going to say you're chatting rubbish i don't want to speak to you like if i if i go in with a whole like it's a painkiller thing if i can get into that go next 90 days yeah of course it, it, or if your blog doesn't pay you so you know, how often trouble. are you checking that? Because I think, you know, one of the, the challenges, as much as we serve the data, you have to go in and look at it and go, right, what's going on? Who, what, what position are they in? How often do you check each of the clients in your portfolio yeah, to so, establish so like, that well, you? Quarterly is a minimum, like quarterly catch-ups uh, across all client bases, and they are booked in. You have a meeting, and you book the next one at the end of that meeting. So literally, it's like, you, that's your minimum. And then, you know, the, when we do the bookkeeping, the bookkeeping squad are in it daily. So anything that yeah, okay. out, that looked unusual, or we have a, a monthly flows on the bookkeeping. So every month, a okay. senior person is looking at that data. And if anything looks unusual, it's it gives us a chance. And then, yeah, and then just the squad, you know, it, it's building building it so that this doesn't sit with the partner director to roll this out is is crucial because a lot of this can be done by you know, part qualified staff, generally speaking. For of course it can. And of course, they're the ones which are talking all the time, yeah. quite often to yeah. the client, isn't it? Yeah. It has to be client led. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess, what advice would you give out to firms that maybe have got a broader client base? Is there, what? how would you tackle that? To, to yeah, I, I guess just start, start, start with, start with the low hanging fruit, start with those you know best, start with those mm -hmm. that you've got the best relationship from regardless of the industry, to be honest. Um, and, you know, yeah, look at the data. You know, the other one is, again, if you're doing data searches, look at those that have that are gearing ratios or have got loan repayments-wise on the cash terms. Because, again, you know, yeah. it's certainly post-COVID, everyone jumped in on the bounce back, COVID loans, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and now it's coming home to roost that you can be making a profit, but your cash is dog because you're now servicing yeah. 10 grand a month. Your Finance. cash is dog. dog I mean, there, right. there is the yeah. phrase that I shall take from yeah. today. Your cash is dog. Cash is dog. Um, um, so yeah, you know, even doing search of your data of those, any any yeah. loan, anyone's got hundred grand plus in a bank loan, like go yeah. and speak. Can they service that? Like like easy wins like that just to start. What's this done? Just before I move on to the next slide, from a new customer perspective, have you found that the flywheels turn now for referrals, and that you're really establishing yourself in a sector by the new business coming in the top as well? Yeah, well, I mean that's how kind of like the marketing and construction almost ended up being specialised in, particularly construction. They'd just be like, I've got a mate or I've got someone else that's mm. got an accountant and wants. To. So we never we never originally targeted either of these two as a this is going to be our master plan. It generally happened through. Well, talk about the app stack online and, and the referral process of this is really useful. So there's, so there's a real double win then with focusing on that specialism is that not only do you get to increase the fees, which you have, of course, then you get to really get that new customer piece flying at the top. Yeah. So then that's how you end up with the results. And we will come to the results from your practice at the end of the this session today so you can see it in real life. But, you know, the results you know, speak for themselves. It shows the return you can get. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, dogs. I want to talk about technology. I mean, we've kind of touched on this as we have gone through this. Um, is there anything else you do want to outline? Because you've been very good and been very flattering about us. But I guess going through the process of choosing the tech that was going to underpin this new service, what process did you go through? Clearly, why you chose us would be a great one. But really, I want the the yeah. audience to understand the process that you went through to establish it. Yeah, yeah. So. I always say, look, there's a lot of there's a lot of apps across the entire stack that are pretty similar to each other, if we're honest, like that aren't that different in some of these areas. And and the most important thing for me is the support that you get on the on the customer side, on the you know, client side of things of when we need help setting things up or training or videos or get on a call or how easy is it to plug in? Like that's that for me is a really important part of it. So there's been apps in the past that we were almost neck and neck, but the, the support and relationship that we got mm -hmm. was what, what drove it. So first one is, you know, do you're going to get this in front of clients and yeah, can do you feel that you get the support from those tech teams? Because things go wrong with the technology, like in everything, everything drops down or something doesn't work. How quickly do you get a response? And if you just got any questions or, or training wise, what do you need to, to get the squad up to speed? So that's number one, really important. 
And the second one, certainly on something like cash flow, is just how accessible. Cash flow is such an interesting one because, you know, it, there are some that are flag packet, quick, run one out, and some that are super detailed. And, and you know, Futurely Advised in the days of old was a fantastic piece of forecasting software, but there's no doubt it was a beast to do it properly. Yeah. Like, you couldn't, I couldn't rack something out in 30 minutes on Futurely Advisor. Like, it wasn't, it was, they were four figure cash flows every time. There was no way this was a quick, let's, yeah. let's plug it in and talk about it. So, so just understanding what your client needs are and what you're looking for, I guess, in terms of... You, you and know. just to be clear to anyone who doesn't know, Future Advisor was our first product. Our latest product, which is the one that Stuart is now talking about that enables him to deliver at scale, is called, oh, it's called Futurely, yeah. just to be double confusing. Yeah. Uh, but it is just Futurely, but it takes all of those learnings and does it at scale. So just to be really clear, he's referencing our first product then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to skip past because I think we'll come back to the tech and really bring it to life when we go into the platform and you can see what you use it for rather than sit here and kind of pitch it. So I think it's probably worth picking apart your clients, this case study. Now, we can't refer to their name, but it is a real client, isn't it? So take us through this. Bring to life what you did for these guys. Yeah. So the, the big one was first just on the fact that like turnover was was doubling. Kind of it was it was growing pretty rapidly. Like, you know, solar panels are uh more and more popular these days and the grants that are out there but the margins were getting smaller and smaller and smaller and the hours that the owners are working were literally you know that's not an overstatement so they they were going from 35 to 70 and it was on these catch-ups of just first was a sense of stress and a sense of pain of like god we're so busy we're so busy and they, it was almost a badge of honor how busy they were but it was only when we got to the financials that well you're not making you're working hard or not making anything and the second thing that really hurt, again, as, as the pandemic ended, was just getting hold of the supplies meant that they weren't delivering on some of the sales. And to deliver some of the sales, they needed to buy stock in bulk. So on, before, they were always just in time, it could all order, it was okay. And it shifted to, oh, we're going to need to spend £100,000 on this stock to, to even deliver the orders that we've got in. And that then put a huge pressure on, of course it did. on the situation, really. So it came alive first on the zero, just the quality catch-up, just chatting through the numbers. What are the pain? You know, I always ask, again, questions to me are, what are the goals and dreams? What are you finding difficult? What's what's your biggest hurdle right now? And it was this sense of I'm working every hour under the sun and it was backed up by those numbers. So the first move was, look, your gross profits all over the place because we're not doing management accounts. So it was... Right, what do management accounts look like? What, how do we spread these costs? Look at the work in progress. And then it was very quickly, when, when they needed to buy stock in advance, it was like, well, you, there's no way you're going to be able to afford 100. You, it, that wipes out you know, all the cash you've got and more. We need to have a conversation about this or you will overtrade. And again, just being able to plug it in and change a few assumptions pretty quickly, like in, yeah. in, in that our management account meeting, it was very obvious, like, you know, I, I mean, I joke with a marketing guy, our place here, green is good, red is bad, like that's solid. If you know that <laughs> and you've got a graph, sound like that. that did you, did you go through the there. assumptions, sorry, did you go through the assumptions with them in the room? So you had the numbers up based on, I guess, our first prediction. You had that number up. Then you went through what the costs and the income, what are you just, did you yeah. just, and then updated them based on what they're saying, actually, that's not right. We're going to increase that and decrease that. Um, well, first, no, first we just started with plugging it in, banging in what I knew was like happening yeah. in terms of, we we're close enough to, to bang a few assumptions in. And it is quite, I say bang it in, in this jovial language, because like it is, it's 30 minutes of what the number's in. It's not, it's not a, a big task. And the line looks horrendous, this red light, this green to red line that red is sloping is bad. down. And yeah. It's gut wrenching to sit in front of someone and go in three months' time, like, you know, you're in you're in major league trouble. It's horrible to sit there. And yeah, of course. It is a pain point. But I always think back again, I've banged about my dad, but I always think like I wish someone would have said that to him before it all went there. I was just so, gonna say to you, I guess yeah. those conversations go back to you know what your dad went through and therefore he's got yeah. that personal piece where you go, I just gotta help because this yeah. so, these people have got families. So it's horrible, but yeah, and pitching that pain point of you working 70 hours for what, like pitch the pain, pitch the pain like of of how tricky it is, how difficult it is, and there's a problem coming and your options are you bury your head in your sand or you work with us to, we can help you. We, I, never promise, I can never promise I can fix it all. I don't have the answers. I'm not a magician, 
but I can come up with potential solutions or at least working on, is it, is it a viable model or do we well, need also, to also, I just it? think it's so, the team thing. I think I know that, you know, Hannah and I, when we did Futurely, and we're very much on your own sometimes. You just think you just want advice. You just want somebody yeah. else to be able to lean on. So even if you can't solve it, having somebody else to lean on yeah. gets you through those hairy moments or gets you to a conclusion. So it's invaluable, however bad the outcome is. Yeah. So yeah. are these steps, I've lost track of where we got to. Were we on step two, step three? Was there anything three, else you I had think, to it? <laughs> my face is over half of them. Um, yeah, so in terms of yeah, so we, so in terms of process and the trends, so it was it was it was shock horror of like this red graph looks horrendous. And then it was the conversation of like we need to do more. Um, and like I say, this client went from about 450 quid a month to one and a half grand a month was the extra wow. we needed to build. This was this was a real detail one of like you need. I need a thousand pounds more to do this properly. But if you don't, there, there is the result in three months. Like it was well, fairly brutal. Like you, you've got to be sometimes. And, and that, that's the ultimate, the hardest, please can you pay me conversation yeah. to probably ever have. You're in the red and I'm asking for more. Yeah, my more. help, my work. Yeah. But the value yeah. I deliver was to hopefully yeah. reduce the red. We'll save that, yeah. And generally, there are some that say no or, or bury the head, but I would genuinely say 75% of those clients where we have of the brutal ones where it's like, oh, this is going to be tough. Go, yeah, like I, I need it. Like what choice mm-hmm. do I have? You, you know, mm-hmm. you've almost got over a barrel in terms of, well, you can you can carry on if you want, but I can tell you where it's going. And yeah. so there was the, the resistance in that front was, and, and then we we're straight to work on, right, how do we change things? And then we get, you know, we build deeper. It goes beyond just the cash flow. It goes into the costings. It goes into the, what price we're charging. The, sub, the subcontractor rates were so much higher than the staff rates, but the rates being used to charge outs were kind of this hybrid rate. And it meant some jobs made loads of money. Others were hemorrhaging from the word go and like that kind of analysis. So what did you, what were the actions you then implemented, which then started to bring them out of it sort of in short? So, and not all of them, because I know there'll yeah, be a so huge was, list, but the headline yeah. action. So it was worked through that cash flow on, on, on start with the income. So go with pricing, like talk about yeah. pricing, look about that. Look at their expenses. The margins have deteriorated. Material costs have gone through the roof with um, solar panels and the timber that they use, uh, for some of the construction stuff. And even the job types, they did some rewiring as well. And it was like, that isn't making you any money. So even looking at those job types. So Okay. And then just literally building a combination of the G sheets and the predictions in there, just to change, just what if, what if we had this one? What if we don't? What if this? And and before we go too deep, just play with the numbers and go, what would a what would a 5% increase in prices do if we lost 2% of the clients? So, you know, yeah, that's okay. quite easy to do in futurely to run those assumptions and then go, okay, well, well, this is that, this is the margin of safety, if you like. And okay. And, and then you go deeper into that's when you really then get into the nuts and bolts of going beyond you, they use a stock system you drill into that you look at timesheets and you off you go on your merry way for for all the other bits. And I guess a really really key question is how is this client today yeah they I mean profitability is <laughs> uh improved dramatically like they've amazing they've, yeah they survived that was a good 12 months ago or so now and like yeah the, the it just proves are, and are they still paying you uh consistent the same amount yeah, yeah, same amount, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, so you've so maintained on, a big client yeah, on the back of yeah, it yeah they're still on they're still on 1500 a month and um and this anything, is the point it fully the increases thing, but- they continue to grow now I think this is the point I made back at the agenda setting at the beginning. It's a win for both. It's not about just adding more revenue to accounting firm. It's actually there's adding huge value and and change to the portfolio as well. Your clients, everybody wins if it's done properly. Yeah. Uh, that sounds like a glorious place to be, but genuinely everyone does win. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen because apparently we've got loads of questions in and I can't open them when I'm screen sharing. So I'm just going to pop. I'm going to pause for questions. Then I'm going to take you into the product so that you can walk people through what you do within it. But just to answer the questions in the meantime, um, Stuart, you mentioned you've got two niches. Uh, this is from, Ma- oh, hello, Martin. Um, does Futurely only work best when you have multiple clients with the same or similar business type models and so get economies of scale? Or is it easy enough for a portfolio of completely different businesses um, to be successful? Yeah, in short, it's easy enough to be completely different. Like you could have one business of every industry in existence and you can plug and play and rock with it there's, there's an advantage in terms of if you have got a niche or a few industries are the same just because you've got a bit more to compare and it, indeed idea generation like i'm pretty good with construction in terms of ideas around you know things they can do because i've seen it a million times in other industry in, in that industry so 
But yeah, it's not, I think that's less about the tech and more about the accounting yeah. special, the advice yeah. piece that you're delivering. You are adding more value at a quicker pace because you know the specialism, yeah. but the software works across a broad, yeah. you know, everybody it doesn't make any difference whether it's... Um, no, and what's on great is it, it's great for things with repeating revenues. It's great for things with yeah. one-off and spikes. Like there, there's yeah. some cool sheets in there which we'll come to that can make life really really easy i get very excited i feel like you're going to reveal so all the cheating so methods cool. you're going to yeah. give them all the shortcuts uh, right. my customer success team will be going no um right paul's asked a couple of questions now do you do you link your clients numbers to future before they sign up with you um if they don't work with you already how do you manage that and also uh this is so oh it's an add-on uh, if you can show them so that you can show them how their data looks yeah so, no so we, if i i'll plug it into future if they're an existing client and we're talking about cash flow like i always show them their real numbers in line if they don't work with me at all no i don't show, i show them the accounts and legal cash flow uh if it's if it's a prospect, if you like, because I can talk about my real gains, my real problems, how the import looks like and what the, the cash flow looks like. So I just show, I don't read the detail, I show client data, but I show graph wise and the break on the predictions and, and use that. So it's, it's, I find that's better than kind of like demo company, so to speak. Yeah, I agree. I think the more you can bring it side for their own data, the better. Um, uh, Paul's additional question actually, which follows on again, he's done three questions. Well done, Paul. Uh, does Future Predict give you good quality predictions for construction clients? The nature of construction is the turnover each month can be very, very different. Do you find this is a problem? No, again, the predictions are pretty decent. So if you've got things like seasonal or particular months that are busy, it will look at that and look at percentage growth or, or decreases for the period. So it's not too shabby and it's quite linked. If you've got your costs and your sales are moving at similar pace wise, the predictions are fairly decent. So it's not bad for a plug and play. There's a few things we, that are standard, like the classic ones, if a client's paid rent late, but is back on terms and things like that. There are a few quick fixes on basic stuff where if they've run behind and they want to get that up to speed. But yeah, broadly speaking, where the recurring is easier to predict. Yeah, of course it is. Because of it, course. It, it's there and you've got baselines. But Obviously, yeah, you're right. Construction. We tend, we like do that. tend to average out across all of our clients that are connected to future on that first, which is 85% accuracy on that first forecast, which I think you all agree is probably about where it comes in, isn't yeah. it? It's really cool when you click into it; it'll tell you how it's worked out, and you kind of like, oh, I, I, you sometimes you don't even know it's like yourself on like, oh, there's something here seasonal or. We had a jeweler that like has photo shoot spends in November ready for Christmas, and even it, it like picked that up like on year on year and. There's, there's cool things like that. It's quite nice. It's, yeah, better than most of the softwares or other softwares I've worked with before. On better than all. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Steph, Steph is a very specific construction question. Steph says, how do you deal with CIS for uh, within Futurely for construction businesses as my current cash flow tool is unable to recognise it? Uh, just the, the, again, there's cool formulas in there. So um, you can do all sorts of weird and wonderful things. It, all about how you set the nominals out and what's linked to what so that you can do formulas based on other nominal codes. So there are times when I tweak the chart accounts or split like sales revenue. Again, it, it, for me, it's beautiful because it improves the client's quality of data. So I've got one now that just had sales, hair, so just had sales but he does this different for hair extensions versus general sales. So like, let's get that in two nominal codes. Then we can start doing funky things around calculations. And it's kind of the same with CIS sometimes of making sure that if there are sales like that, they're in a different nominal if there are non-CIS sales so that you've got that, that split. And then you can do all sorts of wonderful if statements, looking at last year's, averages. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll go into that screen and don't make me build any formulas, but we'll definitely show you around yeah. it with, uh, <laughs> with Stuart's guidance when we, do, when we go jump into the platform in a second. Um, Katie says, um, I'm looking for advisory software currently. Why do you think Futurely is better than others in the market? Uh, I mean, G sheets that I've banned on about loads of times are amazing. So, like, you can import Excel. Well, it's not G sheets, is it? it's not Excel, but I call it Excel still. So spreadsheet data ultimately. So, like, the, the payroll bit was the one that blew me away. Where it, payroll in forecasting is painful sometimes because you work out the NI, you've got to do the page you earn, it's 19 days after month end or whatever, all that crap. And it takes ages to do that in a forecasting tool. <laughs> this, just put it in a spreadsheet, put the names of the people, put what they're paid, put when they get the pay rise, put it for the commission bang the machine does it so the g sheets are amazing i'm just turning the predictions on and off it's quite nice on other software it's not quite as easy to turn them on turn them off like just on screen and update the numbers and if you do it right and you've got a, like a commissions line in a cost that's linked to a sales turning one off changes the other one as well so you're not having yeah. to go 
turn this it off, does. turn this off, turn this off. It it's genuinely th it thinks yeah. like an accountant, doesn't it? That was our that was our kind of MO when we were building out our algorithms. It's like, how would an accountant tackle this? Um, Katie, I'm going to add a tiny a bit extra in with the only um, advisory software that does short, medium and long term cash flow. So that's the big one. In addition to all of the user features that, that Stuart was just talking about. Last question before I'm going to take you into the platform for your journey around the platform. It's not me demoing it. It's Harry, who says for £1,500 a month, um, what service are you providing? Uh, accounts, cash flow management accounts, VAT returns. Okay, good. Um, and uh, fine. And then if you think of anything else as we go into the product, shout. Yeah. Uh, Katie said, thank you very much. And a recording will definitely be sent out, Katie. And apparently Pauline lost sound, but I'm hoping you're back. And you probably only missed that your cash is dog. I think that was the main phrase that I took from this, right? Two seconds, let me share my screen and I'm gonna push you into the app now. So share screen, you can probably see, oh, oh, let's get rid of that, sorry. Two seconds, get rid of the slides, get rid of the, oh, it's so professional, isn't it? There we go. We're real life people using tech, right? Hopefully you can see Futurely. Really hoping uh, my marketing team what's at me if nobody can because I can't see any messages. But Stuart, this is uh, Futurely for anybody who has not seen it before. This is the very latest, uh, the piece of tech I was talking about at the beginning. There's lots of different areas that I will just get Stuart to kind of walk us through so that we can, you can understand how he uses it for. But we've got performance dashboards, we've got predictions pages, we've got the Google import, I'll definitely be going there. And then we've got all of our dashboarding and reporting section. I'm going to start on this performance page because I just want you to explain how you use this, because this is an overview, isn't it, of predictive performance. So, Stuart, what yeah. do you use these pages for? Yeah, so this is just that initial, well, initially that intro, like that basic, that, that graph there, like there you go, like Cash's dog in terms of that green line. Like that's that's the, you know, we get to July, life looks good, but we've got a problem when we get to August and September. So so that's that's the that's the opening gambit of just keeping it. I think it's easy as an accountant to get too technical and get too nuts and bolts straight off the bat. So generally just talk about cash on these screens. Like I'm not that interested in the balance sheet at this early doors. Mm -hmm. I'm not that interested in the PL, truth be told. I'm interested in cash. Like, and that's where I, I start the journey. It evolves once this is rolling and you've got to say forecast in terms of yeah. the basic of a management pack. Again, we start we've building started building reports now, so there's a bit more of a development. But it, from a client perspective, this isn't a bad place to log in and just see the data. Like, are you on track or are you behind? Is it's it's and it's just keep it top level overview and do not get complicated yeah. on the two page. And I think that's what that's what we wanted this page to be. It's got their projected net profit for the year ahead, their cash flow, all of those bits and pieces. And it was meant to be just that. This is your first conversation, no setup. It's there to go. Talk about VAT, all of those juicy things that they know about. There's no education in this screen. These are numbers that they recognize and want to know the answer to. But I guess it probably pushes me into the predictions because I want you to talk. We keep talking about this plug and play piece, right. don't we? Yeah. And oh, I think can I, just one last tab on that one that is a, yeah. the customers and suppliers tab. Um, yes. Just filtering that by, um, you know, like on zero and Sage or whatever, you can filter it. Yeah, you can look at total invoice and stuff like that generally. But this is really filterable. And how long are they taking to pay? Like, and rank that kind of thing. Like, there's, there's a nice bit of data in front of clients just to show them do you know that you know the grand hotel is your big most invoice client etc but they're taking 10 days longer than your average like it's not rocket science but you'd be amazed how many times clients do. i mean i couldn't tell you our top 10 clients off my head like that so it's you need to go just, look at your predict account you need to yeah, look at your future account um, then you'll be fine <laughs> we did you know what it was an interesting it was an interesting view that a couple of weeks ago that i'll tell you that <laughs> um and saying you can do it on customers and also suppliers in terms of spend and where things are at and even trends over six months 12 months two years you can do these filters and it, yeah it's, it's really... got you can you can drill in even further and go and look yeah. at things like risk so because we do the predictions based on their payment behaviors as well as the the recurring transactions you can start to see if customers are taking longer to pay because we see that and therefore we just start to flag the risk so it does it gives you so much of the info which is in zero or quickbooks or sage but isn't visible and this is where we just surface it we take it out of there and put it up into here um let's talk about the predictions though because i think this underpins the whole thing and there are there's kind of two ways of forecasting in future isn't it there's that first budget where as soon as you connect up the bookkeeping software you get this cash flow forecast that you can see on screen here yeah. so yeah. 
this is where you spent your time with your client, isn't it? And do you, where yeah. do you start? Do you start with the invoices and bills that are sitting there or do you start across somewhere else in the P&L? So the only time I start with that is if that list is massive and there's a load of things that were dated ages ago. And I'll just flag that, Jesus, why have we got November invoices that had a due date of December? We're now in February. Like, what's that about? What's the crap? Like, so... And you'll move them. So you'll go, actually, yeah. we know this one isn't going to come in till the end of March so that you can properly get that as tight as you can possibly, you know, that yeah. true cash flow picture on the short yeah. term. But I wouldn't okay. do that early doors. Like the only conversation okay. at the start of the journey is, God, like again, I talk, <laughs> dog, like if they're crap, them debt is a crap, what's going on? Have you got a process yeah. for that? That's a separate conversation. Yeah. But start of the 10 is, well, you know, there's 13 grand of unpaid bills. There's 23 grand of unpaid invoices. There's 23 grand that's sat on that table right there. Yeah. What are yeah. you doing about it? So, yeah. again, it's in zero. It's there, but it's just in your face here of, like, how old this stuff is and, and what it's yeah. doing. But I wouldn't – I generally, unless there's a few, I don't dive into that, like, session. Fine. Like, Let's change so where do you start then in the p I mean, I'm assuming you don't start in the balance sheet. I'm assuming you start across the P&L. So I, where I do you start? I start on the, on the cash flow statement, truth be told, top right. Oh, uh, okay. There of like, because that tells the story of, of where things are and where the gains are. And normally the pain point, you see a dirty red one every quarter, which is the VAT <laughs> quarter. That's, I yeah. can tell you where the VAT payment is by that dirty red box in that cash flow. That's what's common. And then it's, and then it's th that... That helps guide me on where to look first on like, right, is this okay. company massively geared? Is it is it debt that's killing it? Is it just lack of profitability? Like there's, for me, there's more we can see there. And clients, I find, get that the most of money in, money out. Mm -hmm, of then, then let's talk about a balance sheet and the P&L. Let's look at that. Let's see where the focus areas are. And then I'll go into whether it's sales, costs, assets, liabilities, depending on, on the state of play after that. And I think in the sales and cost liabilities, this is where you were sitting. So for those that haven't seen it, that predicted line is that instant budget that we create. And Stuart was referencing before you can click on it. So you can see we've just generated it as soon as you connect the bookkeeping software. If you want to know where we got the number from, you can just click on any of the numbers and it will explain it. And that will go, ah, oh, that's that. And it will also tell you if there's any hidden journal movements in there. We don't forecast those in the cash flow. So there's loads of info behind the predicted one. But Stuart, your point when you were sitting with the solar panel client was you did some of this housekeeping before and said, actually, that's not right and toggled it off. Yeah. And then yeah. you worked with them to add the new assumptions in. And the new assumptions, we'll spend some time in here because this is what you were referencing before. And I promise you, I will go to the Google Sheets. I'm just making you patiently wait for that bit. Uh, but bit. we've got loads of methods in here, haven't we, to be able to yeah. build out those additional assumptions. Which is the one do you think you do use the most? Uh, I, see, I like some of the, the referencing like last month. And, uh, in terms of that, it'd be the formula stuff. It's a formula, okay. stuff. formula and unit are my two favorites. Like the unit okay. one as well. The unit, um, you're going to sell X amount of units at Y price. And we've actually built into this latest product, uh, refund percentages, which has gone down very well with our clients. We were asked for that many, many times before. But in the formula piece, I mean, this is, you're probably better at talking through this, but I think someone was talking about before being able to reference the CIS, I guess. This yeah. is referencing those different nominal codes. You can yeah. reference any of them. You can lump them together. You can build out any formula that you want to drive any account line within the forecast, yeah. can't you? Yeah. So cost of sales as a percentage of income. That's not a CIS yeah. formula. But that's because I am not doing a CIS formula <laughs> on a public webinar. Yeah. But you really can get really creative with these, can't you? Yeah, we've done some, yeah, mad ones, really, with some of those. And, and it, even on, like, stock fulfilment of, like, if the stock inventory gets less than a certain number, then we need to put more back into it. So you can run a gross profit percentage of, like, 77%, but know that when the inventory gets so low, we need to restock. So you can do all sorts of – I mean, it took me a wee while to work out how to do it, truth be told, the first time around, but um, – because my Excel skills aren't that good as an accountant, if I'm honest, but um, – it was more that's, like, that's what our team are here to help people with is to do yeah. those formulas because once you've um, done them and then you're in those I mean if you're using them in Excel anyway to your point it's repeating that Excel formula into here we've yeah. got Excel formulas it's just pulling from the nominal yeah. codes rather than another cell yeah um, but what's really so, nice is it'll tell you at the bottom what it's doing like if you build the formula at the bottom it'll say yeah. these are the accounts I'm going to change and also these are the numbers that I'm looking at to make that assumption 
Yeah. And that makes life really easy as well. In terms oh, I've of not that. given it a name. That's why it's not changing. And then like, why is it not changing anything? It's because I didn't give it a name and I'm now breaking our demo account, which is genius, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to love live demos. Um, there also are is um, if statements. You referenced these before. Um, we've made use of these things like commission payments. You know, if X amount of sales are made, we pay Y amount of commission. If less than that, it's Z amount of commission. And that's exactly what this is, isn't it? And do you use the if, the if formulas a lot? Yeah, commissions are the most common ones for like if sales are over a certain level, if you've hit certain yeah. things, then, then. So we'll generally, like you can put basic commissions in the G sheet for wages, but they're more set levels. If they're going to vary, we put base level wages on the import and the mm -hmm. variable bit in this if statement, because that's the bit that catches the, if they're over okay. a certain amount. Um, um yeah. good uh we've also got um the different uh, cash flow treatments um i'm assuming you utilize this quite heavily when you're two with your formulas yeah yeah so i mean multi days is relatively common yeah. you know again you know things like rates and things like that you can put one in but pay it over periods so you don't have to yeah. make 10 different lines um and the the non-cash transfer is your journal but again there, you know, I wouldn't generally do prepayments and accruals on this way. I'd, I'd import that in on the spreadsheet because it's miles easier. But there are some decent non-cash transfers for other bits and pieces that you might need to move around. Shall I go to the Google Sheet? So the Google Sheet, which is a Google Sheet at the moment, um, it tells an AWE to do. Oh, I did have it open, and of course I've shut it. So let me just reopen it. Um, it will be um, actually brought into the app. The capability you're about to see very, very shortly. But the Google capability get, basically gives you the spreadsheet capability. So do you want? Should we go through the payroll one? Is that probably the place to start? It's, that's the, that was one that blew my mind when we first when I first saw it and thought, wow, like this is so much better than. Life so itself. in really simple terms. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just really, I think I'm just really, the more I think about it, I'm just really sad. No, the end, I guess, no do you know what? We have been asked about payroll yeah. since in the past 10 years, since our first product, because everyone was looking for wind forecast replacements and forecasting payroll is just time consuming and painful. Um, and this is our kind of wizard. And, and it's been the most widely used actually of everybody using any of the Google Sheets. For those that don't know, the Google Sheets basically sit in a hot link within Predict. So anything you add to this, um, this uh, Google Sheet, which has lots of templates on it, by the way, not just payroll, you can do loan amortization, or you can do that with your, your formulas now. You've got all sorts of different formulas you can use or you can bring in your own data um, you then hit sync and it hoists that data straight into Futurely to then uh, to then show the um, the impacts so um, you do need to just do a quick setup you know what expense and so, you know what are the salary accounts just the basic setups when do they run payroll and any HMRC or pension payments so that we know where to do those cash movements because ultimately let's pretend we're going to hire Stuart shall we we'll just put Stuart Hurst is joining the team Yay. I hope there's a lot of zeros <laughs> at the end of that song. That's <laughs> yeah, and obviously you're going to come in, uh, obviously, as a director, and you're going to start on, let's have you starting on, uh, I was going to put April the 1st, that would have been amusing, well, and yeah. an annual salary, and of course, we're going to pay you 150 grand a year, there you go. Um, you can build in, oh, oops, she slides too fast, um, any commission or bonuses, they can be built into it as well for either monthly or, or, or annual bonuses. You can do expense overrides if you've got directors salary accounts you can then point that to that one over just the standard salary account um, and we can manage two payroll runs so if you've got a weekly run and you've got a monthly run again you can build out the forecast based on that and you can even build in salary increases and any additional like hardware costs that with the client now that we've added Stuart all that we need to do I'm just going to stop maximizing my screen because it makes a future leader spirit is hit sync and it's just going to sync that uh, data sheet in sync predictions I'm just going to move your head, Stuart. Right. Uh, it's a problem with Zoom, his head's getting in the way, don't they? And I'm just going to come out and then I'm going to go into our expenses account, come down to our salaries. And there we have Stuart Hurst joining. It's worked out the, the first monthly payment based on the payment runs that we do and, 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 and pro routed it accordingly. Um, it works really well with exiting staff as well then, doesn't it, Stuart? So if you've got clients even all, or which I've seen managing redundancies out or exiting staff out, again, it manages it absolutely to a pinpoint. And it doesn't just do the salary. It does uh, the pension. It does any pension expense. It will have added Stuart into the pension expense for each of those periods. So we'll have done all the allocated relevant costs and, of course, the cash movements that are underneath. Add to it, Stuart, because I have done the work. Yeah, the crucial <laughs> bit there, though, is this is the big win, is you can send that sheet to the client to fill in kind of thing. So, like, in terms of time-wise and knowing the data, well, yeah, it can be a pain to get that off, but send that to the client. There's a few other sheets on 
costs, monthly costs, what they think they'll be. They often have that in a spreadsheet. Like send them that stack of G sheets and get them to fill a chunk of that in. And like life gets so much more accurate and easier from the accountant side. And it helps the client think about how they understand the numbers and what they've what they've got. So there's a there's a bit more buying from them in that they are, they understand the numbers a bit more or thinking about what they're spending. Um, so that was the big win. It just made it. It, it Good. Was a, it and you're not alone, effort. honestly. It's it's the most used integration that we have the, the, of the Google Sheets. Um, people love it and it has made life so much easier. Um, I'm so conscious of time and there's a load of questions that come in. So I just want to touch on the reporting because in Futurely, in, uh, we've got, I mean, beautiful reports can be created. It's so easy to do. We learned the lessons, you know, it's now drag and drop. You can drag any report, use the formulas that you sure saw that were in the forecasting across, come on, Wi-Fi. <laughs> Brilliant. You love the end of a demo, but you can base, I mean, this is a big old meaty report, but you can create any report to look in any, um, any direction, look at historical information, forecast information, look at any specific KPI. And I think the beauty of it is that it genuinely is just drag the chart or table onto this sheet that you want to show, fill it out with the colors and displays that you wish, and then send it to your client. What do you use this for? Yeah, it's like it's like Canva, isn't it? Is the yeah. layman's terms of for uh, editing. And, and again, it's building that pack. And I always say to my clients, look, I'm going to build this pack one. And normally it's a PL balance sheet, cash flow, blah, 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 the standard stuff. But I always say, look, if in, if in three months' time and in six months' time the report is the same, then sack us because we've not got close <laughs> to what matters to you. So, so for me, this this is something that over over that six months year period evolves, and and they all start almost identical with the uh, P and L cash flow. And now, you know, you look at three months in of like uh, you pick ten clients, they'll all look slightly differently now because of the way yeah, what is important to that client. And I just think that's quite cool. That, um yeah that builds well i was just building very quickly as you were talking to show how easy it is to build these reports out and yeah. they can be built as either that was a little teeny tiny chart but you know you can uh, build charts build tables you can add text boxes we haven't got time to go through it now but it has total flexibility and it can be delivered as either a pdf a printable pdf or of course as a live dashboard depending on your clients do you tend to use dashboards or reports yeah dash, dashboards almost yeah um, i thought you would yeah. i could have almost guessed that answer before i asked you right i'm going to stop sharing and i'm going to come back to pick up because we've got a load of questions i'm so conscious of time um thank you to everybody who's giving us all the questions um Oh, great feedback. Uh, so uh, a key feature is the ability to do a weekly forecast. This will be a game changer for our practice, which, of course, I, we didn't cover, but you can definitely do with them futurely. Do you do many weekly forecasts? There's a few uh, retailers wise that, that need it on that weekly basis. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, we don't, it's often viewed monthly, but if there's a spike in a particular week, that's where, again, we examine that one and go, well, can we kick a payment down the road? That's normally the way. It's normally like, well, what can we not pay for that week? Um, so we only tend to go into weekly if we need to. Yeah, OK. There's, we're going to actually release um, a feature which is coming out in March, which is the scheduling of reports, the automated scheduling. So those reports that you build can be sent daily, weekly, monthly, any period that you want. It will come to the accountant for verification first. You can basically just tick it off um, and then go straight out to the client or be sent straight to the client. But that's to ease some of the drain of weekly reporting because it can be really challenging. But it's for those clients that just want that weekly cash flow check, I guess, that aren't using dashboards. So we're we're bringing that one in to help, too. Um, is there a way to share formulas that accountants set up so others can use them? Um, it's probably one for me to answer this one. Um, so uh, at the moment, we share it by our, RC, our customer success team, actually, because they work with all of our accountants to help them get set up. Not that it needs any training. I think you'll validate that, won't you, Stuart? It is so easy to get going. It's not some big training program. But where our customer success team are really valuable is helping to identify those specific formulas that you're trying to either use or is there others that people are using within a sector so we have that information but we are going to actually introduce community sharing for formulas and board packs because you're not alone to ask for it so that will enable you to access other charts tables reports that other people are willing to share out into the accounting community um, another question do you use g sheets for clients to put their project turnover forecast together yeah correct so there's a few versions of that of you can even blend recurring and one-off projects and it, some clients will give particular names to projects for actual pipeline names other times it's a bit bigger like a general line if you like for just a general pipeline so um yeah the short answer is and we stack some because you can you can do 
several of the same sheet as well to add extra data in there. So we've done that a few times. And I mean, like if the client wants to get it really detailed, I've loads of lines of customs and clients, like it is absolutely doable depending yeah, on how course. detailed they want to get. Uh, good. Um, I am going to share my screen quickly because I think we have to celebrate the success really that Accounts and Legal have seen over the past um, 12 months. It's phenomenal. And I think you just quickly take everybody through this. Oh, present, present. I can never use power. There we are. Oh, no, I'm on the wrong screen. Hold on there. We, is that the right way around? Yeah. Can you see the yeah, slides? So. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully yeah. So, yeah. It's just, yeah, growing. And, and crucially, like the, what's nice with this is you know, yeah, I led the charge and did it first, if you like, but take the pad ones on, take the trainees on with those meetings and um and you can pick it up really quickly. It's not, it's not, it isn't rocket science. It's a few nuances around some of the formulas if you want to get real detail, but in terms of building a forecast and having that conversation, um, and obviously the G sheet input, that isn't the most complicated thing. Like most accountants will eat out for breakfast, like kind of thing. It doesn't need to be someone with 16 years experience that's done it. So um and just, well, yeah, you know, you can, you can mass roll it out then if you like. You can really go at it in terms of plugging clients in and, and going at it. And I just think these numbers on screen now, doubling turnover, staff members, et cetera, et cetera, just shows the output and the value that can be delivered and derived from really draw, sitting behind delivering advisory services effectively um, out to portfolio. So very, very well done, Stuart. And that does bring us, I think we're almost, we're bang on time, look at that. Um, thank you to everybody that has joined us today. Um, I hope that was a valued session. Oh, I'll stop sharing my screen. Of course, I've lost my mouse somewhere in the other screen now, but I'll just talk. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we will share a recording of this out to you all um, shortly, so keep your eye on your inbox. And uh, it's time to say thank you, Stuart. Thank you for taking the time and uh, we will speak to you soon. All right, cheers everyone, thank you.